welcome aboard Alex's Animal Ark. My name is Alex and I will be your guide to all the amazing animals that live on our planet. Today we will be learning about the Southern Flying Squirrel. So what is a Southern Flying Squirrel? To start with, they're one of the three species of flying squirrel in North America. The other two species are the Northern Flying Squirrel and Humboldt's Flying Squirrel. A more accurate name would be a gliding squirrel since they glide instead of fly. Southern flying squirrels can reach lengths between 8 and 10 inches, and their tails can be between 3 to 4 inches in length. Their weight can be up to 90 grams. They can live 3 to 5 years in the wild. Their body is covered in gray-brown fur with darker sides and a cream-colored underbelly. Their ears are small with pink hairless insides. They have very large eyes relative to their body size, which are surrounded by darker colored fur. Inside their mouths, you can find 22 teeth. Their front and back feet are about the same size, but the front feet have five claws, and their back feet only have four. Their tail is large and flattened to help with gliding. In between the front and back legs on either side is a furry membrane called a patagium, which the southern flying squirrel extends to glide from place to place. So where can you find southern flying squirrels? They're found in deciduous, conifer, and mixed forests. Their favorite tree species are maple, beech, poplar, oak, hickory, and other seed-producing hardwoods. Their range is from southeastern Canada to the eastern United States, as well as parts of Mexico and Honduras. So what are some southern flying squirrel behaviors? Southern flying squirrels are nocturnal and highly social animals. They spend most of their time in the trees, but sometimes they may go down to the ground to forage. They are also omnivores. Their diet consists of many different things such as seeds, nuts, fungi, fruit and insects, as well as eggs, birds, and carrion occasionally. They can often be found in large groups that fly and forage together. They also often gather in large number inside dens, especially during the winter months to conserve heat. These dens can be tree snags, woodpecker holes, nest boxes, and abandoned nests of birds and other squirrels. Southern flying squirrels have somewhat large home ranges, with females having home ranges that are about 4,050 square meters and males having ranges of about 6,000 square meters. Females are very territorial and will aggressively defend their home ranges from other females, especially during mating season and if there are babies present. This means that female, females' home ranges do not overlap, overlap with the ranges of other females. Males, on the other hand, are not very aggressive, and their home ranges often overlap with the home ranges of other males and females as well. Both males and females have really good homing capabilities and can very easily find their way back home. Even though they are called flying squirrels, they actually glide as stated above. To do this, they climb really high up in the tree, and they move their heads and bodies from side to side to triangulate where they want to go. Then they do a running start, or they fling themselves into the air from a stationary position. Next, they extend their arms and legs to pop open the patagium to catch the air and glide at angles of 30 to 40 degrees. They can maneuver quite well when gliding to avoid obstacles like branches, and they can make 90 de degree turns to do so. Southern flying squirrels can glide over 150 feet, but oftentimes their glides are shorter than that. Finally, when they are reaching their destination, they flip up their tails to raise their front end up and cause their patagium to act as a parachute to absorb some of the landing shock with their legs absorbing the rest of it. After landing on the tree, they run quickly around the other side of it or up to the top to avoid any predators that may have followed them. Speaking of predators, the main ones of the southern flying squirrel are owls, hawks, black rat snakes, other snakes, bobcats, raccoons, and domestic cats. Southern flying squirrels mate twice during the year, the spring season which is from February to March, and the summer season which is from May to July. They will often mate with multiple individuals over their lifetimes, 
and the males will leave after mating, leaving the female to care for the babies herself. Females typically give birth to two to seven babies after a 40-day gestation period. The babies are born without fur and are very helpless for quite a while. The mothers will nurse their babies for six weeks, and by eight weeks, the babies have been weaned and are able to feed, fend for themselves, but oftentimes stay with their mother until her next litter. Southern flying squirrels communicate in several different ways, including ultrasonic communication and several other noises. And now it's time for some Southern Flying Squirrel fun facts. They can hoard up to 15,000 nuts in one season. Exposure to Southern Flying Squirrels has been linked to cases of epidemic typhus in humans, which is known as sylvatic typhus, which is very rare, so please observe these animals at a distance to reduce that risk. They look very similar to sugar gliders that are found in Australia, but southern flying squirrels are rodents and sugar gliders are marsupials. There is a minor league baseball team affiliate of the San Francisco Giants called the Richmond Flying Squirrels, whose mascot name and logo are based on the southern flying squirrel. In the games Pokemon Black and White, uh, which are themed around the eastern United States, there is a Pokemon named Emolga, which is based on the southern flying squirrel. Rocket J. Squirrel from the show Rocky and Bullwinkle is a flying squirrel. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed it and want to hear more, feel free to subscribe to Alex's Animal Arc on YouTube or subscribe on Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Castro, CastBox, Podfriend, and iHeartRadio. And also feel free to fill out the survey about who would win in a fight, a gorilla or a grizzly bear. Feel free to like and follow the Alex's Animal Arc Facebook page and visit by my website by following the links for them in the description. If there's an animal you would like to hear me cover, please email your name and the animal you want to hear about to the email in the description and I will add it to the list. Or feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or on the Facebook page with an animal you'd like to hear about if that makes you feel more comfortable. Thank you for coming on this animal adventure. I will see you all again for the next voyage when we will learn about the Garanook.